Happy Valentine's Month, everybody. I'm the Sluggers Review, and I'm here today to share with you some of my favorite Valentine's Day episodes from TV shows or even movies. Um, not everything is all lovey-dovey. Sometimes Valentine's Days deal with heartache and everything. So some episodes will be romantic and lovey-dovey, while others will be very like sad and heart-wrenching and stuff but love is love it doesn't always come with like you know smiles and giggles and glee you know so i'm here today to talk to you about legend of the seeker season one episode revenant so i've been wanting to talk about this episode for a good while i wanted to do it for my valentine's day special but like um i got sidetracked and started making like a bunch of like um black history month videos and so i wanted to start cranking out more like you know valentine's day stuff so i can get back to my like regular regular videos that i recorded the audio for ever since like last year early last year but never had a chance because halloween and thanksgiving and christmas came up oh the holidays so yeah this is a very powerful love episode i remember when i first saw i was just like in awe and i'm still in awe and everything and it's like it's it's an episode that doesn't even have like no action which you know normally that kind of like bugs me and stuff especially if this is a type of this is an action show but that's okay because the story is just that powerful and so if the story is that powerful, I don't need no action. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, I don't know, man. It's just like, this episode is just that good. You know, I like this show way better than Wheel of Time. I like this show even better than Game of Thrones. Like, I just can't get into Game of Thrones. Like, I just watched the first season. And I was kind of intrigued to watch the rest of them, but I'm just like, eh, whatever, you know? I just can't get into it for some bizarre reason. And like everybody else, I mean, everybody else is obsessed with that show and stuff. I just couldn't get into it. And so, like, yeah. So, in this episode, Richard and his friends have now found the box of Orton. And it's, it's a, uh, well, the boxes of order. And they're very powerful boxes. You combine all three together. And, like, it gives the person, like, ultimate, like, type power. They only have one, I believe. And so, like, Richard now knows about, like, you know, Kaylin and the whole being confessed type thing. And, and in the last episode, he learned about, like, the past confessors and had a book on them and stuff like that. So, he's reading a passage in the little Seeker diary thing of all the Seekers that came. Now, Richard is the first true Seeker in a thousand years. They haven't been one in a thousand years. The last one was Kieran. And so, he's reading a passage about how Kieran... Um, just got through battling like his um, enemy and everything and it was a huge war with a bunch of villagers and stuff that he helped fight alongside him and his confessor and his wizard and sadly they did not make it out of there alive his com him and his confessor the wizard is still alive and so like the, the wizard just watched them as they lay next to each other in love and dying and so he um placed Kieran's body in like a crib and so like that's where they want to hide the box of Orton now before all this happened we see two like grave robbers they break into the crib with a magical spell because the only way to open it is with magic and so like all of a sudden they get like creeped out one runs away and then this weird thing is like running towards one of them and he screams and so then we get to like Richard telling like the story right so anyway they head to the crypt and they open it up because Zed is like a wizard of the first order so he can like open it up right and so like it's dark it's eerie it's creepy 
and they find the um, casket that has Karen's body in it. And so, like, before they see that, they see, like, paintings of the wall talking of, like, Karen's last battle and stuff like that. And so, Richard, you know, he's, like, all in awe just to be in, like, the presence of, like, greatness, you know? So, when they open up the crypt, they realize something. Or open up the, the coffin, I should say. When they open up the coffin, they realize there's nothing in it. His bones and body just like nowhere to be found. And so they have no idea where. But then all of a sudden, some strange stuff starts to happen. A man um, tries to like attack them and stuff. And it's the same man who's like a grave robber. So he's trying to like kill them with like a dagger. But then Richard ends up killing him with his sword. And so then we see like this spirit type thing leave the uh, the man's body and fly away. Zed is very worried because he knows that the spirit world is not necessarily a good one. And so like they all get kind of like separated a little bit as it's getting like really dark. And Richard hears Kaylin voice calling out to him. And he sees a confessor with a white dress um, turn the corner. He thinks it's Kaylin, so he chases after her. And this leads him to another part of the um, crypt. And he finds another casket in a wooden box this time. And in there is, the, um, is some writing. Now the writing is in an ancient like language that was from like thousands and thousands of millions of years ago. And only like a seeker can read it. And so Richard reads it and says, this lies the true body of Kieran. So they don't know why it's like way over here and not where it's supposed to be in a nice like uh, coffin. So Richard, impulsive that he is, goes and open it. Zed warns him that, you know, this isn't a good idea. That you, sh you know, we should just like leave as um, before something bad else happens, you know. Because they can't even open the door on the outside no more. So, like I said, Impulsive Richard, he opens it up. And then there are the bones of Kieran. But it's weird. His body is fully intact um, with the bones. But his head has been removed and is down by his feet. And there are these, like, um, cloth bands wrapped around his head, his feet, and parts of his body with, like, um... A language on there and Zed tells him this is like a wizard's um type of thing where like they bind the spirit of the person to like the bone so they can't go to the underworld and everything and so Kaylin and Richard are kind of like why would they well, who would do this and everything and Zed's all like he don't know but like they must have had a good reason to do it but Richard is kind of just like you know we should like reassemble it and blah, 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 blah. Zed doesn't want to because it's against the law to mess with another wizard's like spell and everything, but he does it anyway. And so he does his magic spell. He burns the bands. And then all of a sudden, a bright white light shoots up from the bones and it goes into Richard. And he has a weird look on his face, but the others don't necessarily notice it. So he takes his sword out and he, uh, well, first they um, put the bones back in the nice coffin. And then he takes his sword out and he clobbers Zed in the back of the head, knocks him out. And Cain doesn't understand what the world's going on with him. And he then confesses he's not Richard, he's Kieran and everything. And so, like, she is just kind of like, you know. You have to get out of his body, this and that. And he's all like, no, my wizard kept me from my true love, my confessor. And so after like an argument, he ties up Kaylin. He binds the back of her hands together. Now, Kaylin does not like being tied up. Or at least she doesn't like having her hands tied. It's because of a very traumatic thing that her dad did to her um, and her sister because they... Of course have confessor type powers and if they touch anybody they can confess them so as kids he tied their hands up and we find this out in the second season 
so like as she's tied he's telling the story of how he loved like um his confessor and how the wizard betrayed him and then he takes like a candle and he starts making like um an inscription in like the floor he's forming a magic um spell and so Kaylin doesn't understand how he knows magic and stuff so at this point in time zed wakes up and when he does the man that Richard killed is now back alive with a giant wound in his chest. The man tells, because Zed knows some kind of spirits in him, but the, the spirit man tells him that he only has a thousand heartbeats before he passes away again. And um, he tells the story of who he is. So the, the spirit that's in the um, grave robber is in Fortis the wizard of Kieran and he tells the story of what really happened back in the day he tells how he lied um about how Kieran and the confessor died see what happened was and Fortis started to realize that the confessor and Kieran started to love each other and he told Kieran stay away from her and I'm gonna have her banished and he's all like, no, please don't do that. He starts like begging him, right? So he's like, fine, whatever. I promise I won't get rid of her. But then all of a sudden, as Kieran and the confessor lady are talking, because she's trying to run away, because, you know, and Ford has told her, like, believe in everything behind Kieran's back. He tells her, no, you know, I love you, blah, blah. So anyway, they do it. And of course, if a confessor does it and starts making out for too long, their power gets unleashed and confesses whoever it is. And the seeker cannot get confessed. It is a big no-no if they are. So once he's confessed, and Fortis tells Zed that um the worst of worst like pretty much happened, right? Um, pretty much what happened was Karen did not uh, finish his quest of defeating this major bad guy and that warlord destroyed like a village right so he tells um the confessor lady to kill herself with poison and she doesn't want to she's crying but she does it anyway because she knows what she has to do so once a confessor dies, nobody's lo no longer confessed. When Kieran finds this out, he is enraged and talking about how he will ruin the wizard's life. The wizard did not anticipate this. He assumed that once the confession is over, that Kieran will go back to normal. But the bond that a f confessor and a seeker have is tied to their hearts. And so even in death, he still loved her and became like enraged and everything and the thing about the sword of truth is that it feeds off a seeker's anger that what gives the seeker the uh, willpower to fight with like 20 men and everything you know or the strength of 20 men i should say and so because of this the bloodlust was too much for like kieran and he went by a nearby village and slaughtered the men, the women, and the children. And Fortis was furious about this and talking about how, like, you have, like, went against, like, um, your oath as a seeker. He, like, uses his powers to grab the sword. And then he tells him, I will stop you. I have to. And then he chops off his head. <laughs> like, what? And they did it with the rain falling down. But made it, like, even more, like, dramatic. When, um, because Michael Hurst plays the wizard, um, Kieran's wizard. And so, if you don't know who Michael Hurst is, boy, go watch Hercules, um, The Legendary Journey. And, um, yeah that dude is like legendary when it comes to like fans of like hercules and xena and so i was really happy to see him again and so like yeah he chops the dude's head off and that's when he bind his spirit to um the the, the the bones and the confessor has been wandering around the underworld for a thousand years waiting for kieran's soul to reunite but it never did because it's been bound and stuff and so the dead wizard dude tells Zed, you know, you have to stop your seeker no matter what. You have to stop Kieran. Um, 
and you now know you can't just kill the confessor you're gonna have to kill your seeker too now zed does not want to do that for like two major reasons one because he's the seeker and he had stopped dark and raw and there's another reason why which we will find out later on in this season it's a doozy of a thing right and so i didn't even see that coming at all so um he tells him he'll do whatever he can to stop him and everything so at this point in time Kieran has finished the spell and his confessor has now taken the body of Kaylin. So then they start making out and they start like ripping each other's clothes off and they just making out like hard and heavy, right? So in Fortis and Zed, they bust open the door so that Zed can stop um, Kieran, right? And so of course his thousand heartbeats are over with. So Zed has to do all this alone. He uses his power to grab the sword and then when he does that the confessor lady tries to confess zed but he takes the sword and he puts it to her neck and he starts stabbing at it and blood is like dripping down a little bit and he tells her um i need both of y'all to leave each other's body and blah 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 and give my people back and they're all like no like the wizard lied to us and we've been like you know i've been wandering the underworld for like a thousand years waiting for my true love to come back and he can't because his spirit is bonded and zed it's all like i am not in fortis i will not do that to y'all i will not read by um buying his um soul but they don't believe it so zed he he tells them straight up look man you get out my seeker right now or I will kill your confessor and then I will rebind your body or your soul back to um, uh, those bones and you'll never see her again. Zed ain't playing around. <laughs> but he's actually um, tricking them. And so it works and they both leave like the body. After that, um, Richard and Kaylin are back to normal, and Zed's all like, look, man, we need to get on out this, like, um, crypt, because <laughs> we can't keep the box here. And so when they leave, um, they start talking about, like, their experience, and talking about, Richard starts talking about how he felt this magical power that he never felt before, which is foreshadowing something for later on in the season. And so, like, um especially in the next season Ooh, i can't believe what happened anyway so as zed looks up into the sky he sees a dark cloud and the cloud looks kind of funny and what it is is a tracer cloud sent by dark and raw to like track down the box so zed uses his powers to um make the white clouds cover like the weird magical cloud and then he decides he's gonna take the box and hide it somewhere secret so he hops on his horse and he leaves and he tells Kaylin and Richard, be good. <laughs> I really love this story. Like the, the, the whole, when you see the flashbacks of Kieran and his confessor in a fortress, it's so powerful and rich. Like the part where when she tries to run away from like Kieran, it's like in this giant wheat field and it's beautiful looking. And then when, um, Karen goes nuts and starts like killing people and Fortis is like shouting at him and like you know it's raining down and they use like this filter like a muted grayish filter to do like the backstory and stuff and it's just so cool looking and it's just and I love the mystical effect they use on like the spirits now we do get to see the underworld what their underworld version looks like in the next season it's pretty neat looking it's all green and flames everywhere but it's like weird it's like a pit and everybody's like on top of one another like um just like like uh, like that like you know they're like in agony and stuff and so yeah this was like a really good love story it's like not even in death was the love broken and that's like very strong and a powerful message you know now wasn't that romantic or depressing depending on what kind of video i just talked about <laughs> okay well happy valentine's day everybody and bye